Hi, in this video I would like to talk about the one of the upcoming features that's going to get shipped with Rails 4.2 called Web Console. Now 4.2 is not stable yet. Uh, do I have it? Okay, right here in the in, in the gem file if you if you take a look, I'm using Rails 4.2.0 beta 1. But pretty soon when 4.2 becomes stable, then you would just obviously use 4.2. And one thing you will notice when you generate a new app in your gem file, you will see this line, gem web console. Now web console is a, is a gem that is becoming included with Rails 4.2. It, it's a very useful gem, and I'll talk about it in a minute. But before I do that, I'm, I just want to tell you that here uh, I'm actually using a... I'm pointing to the GitHub repo, so I'm using the master branch because the tag that was provided by Rails 4.2 beta 1 was had a couple of issues that got resolved in the master branch. But like I said, once Rails 4.2 becomes stable, you will probably not have to worry about that because the latest stable version of Web Console will probably include those bug, bug fixes. So anyway, here I have a really simple uh, app that I, I basically just ran the scaffold. So app controllers, I have blogs and users. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So let's just go to users. And also let me start the server. So test app rails server. And and yes, I'm using Opera. I, I like Opera browser. Um, so if I go to localhost, 3000 slash users what's gonna happen is oh well I have I need to run my migrations so this is also really cool it actually checks for migration so I'm just gonna do rake db migrate really quick and run rails server again so as you can see here I have a I have one user, but that doesn't really matter. I'm just going to quickly demonstrate. Uh, I'm, I'm going to artificially create an exception, which is going to um, show the web console on your page. So here I'm going to just raise foo. It doesn't really matter what, uh, what gets raised. And um, reload the page. And what you can see here is, in addition to the default code snippet with highlighted line that it's raising the exception you also at the bottom of the page you can see this little console right here so you can actually move this up and down which is also really cool and this console actually you can it's it's a ruby console so you can run one plus one um three divided by two so it's a fully functional ruby console but not just that it actually has access to all the variables that got um like when this um, exception got raised. So for example, if I, if I do users, you see right here, it's it's actually containing the user. And you also have uh, access to the user class. So you can do first, last, etc. And also you can do params. Uh, I think self would be the binding. Oh no, it would be users controller. Yeah, so a actually, you have access as if you were uh, debugging and as if you put were, were to put debugger in this line you absolutely have access to everything it's it's a pretty sweet uh, feature so so that's awesome right that's already like a huge feature a really useful thing that you can use but what makes this exceptional is the ability to click now you see applications trace right here we have only one um, one line, but if I switch to framework trace, you can see you have a whole bunch of um, a whole bunch of lines in the stack trace. So here you can you can click and and when that, whenever you click on something, it's actually going to uh, show you how this exception happened. So, for example, if I click here, you see it, it's going to highlight the line that generated the exception, but what's amazing is actually this will allow you to access those variables in that frame it is really really cool uh, env and self is now 
active support callbacks filter bef filters before. It is really easy and powerful. And uh, let's switch back to the application trace. And you see right here, we can we can access users. So thank you. <laughs> this gem was um, created. I'm not sure who it was created by. So let me go check that. Uh, web console GitHub. Of course, it's under Rails now. And uh, we can go to the original repo and click on this person's name. I'm not I'm not going to try to pronounce your name, but thank you and also thank you Railsteam for incorporating this amazing feature into the stack.